time. Okay, I'm going to call to order the Administrative Matters meeting of the Larimer County Board of Commissioners today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. I am Tom Donnelly. I am the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners this year. I'm joined by John Kafalas, Commissioner from District 1, Steve Johnson, Commissioner from District 2, Stephanie Grosskopf from the Larimer County Court and Recorder's Office is here with us to keep the minutes of this meeting. Our County Manager, Linda Hoffman, is here at the control panel. And Alicia Jeffers from the Commissioner's Office is here to time the public comment portion of this meeting. Um, the board is the tradition of this Board of Commissioners to begin this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to ask you to stand and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that, everyone. The first item of business this morning for the board is public comment. Um, we, we limit public comment to three minutes. Um, we don't typically respond to public comment, but if you ask a specific question to the board, we, uh, we will typically get back to you uh, either via phone or email at, uh, or through, uh, or through some kind of dialogue with our county manager. So uh, that being said, the first uh, person who signed up is none other than Red Jewett. Uh-oh. Haven't seen you in a while. It's like the shark that's underneath the surface and then the dorsal fin pops up. You know you're in trouble. <laughs> Good morning, Red. Anyway, I, <clears throat> it's about my fence, 1,200 East Douglas Road. <laughs> when the city redone the entrance to Hearth Fire, they took the fence out. Colorado law says you're supposed to put the fence back anytime. Well, I furnished a two-inch pipe post. They drilled the holes, put them in the ground, cemented them. And the top of them are like this. They put up an orange plastic construction fence, walked up to me and told my wife, you fix the fence and send us the bill. That ain't the way it works. They promised to put, I wanted to match the one on the west side of the driveway with the pipe post and the sucker rod fence welded on those, with the mill iron welded to the post. And I've been waiting. This year the weeds are terrible, I can't turn anything out. Then the wife, I rented a portable welder and put up two strands of it so the horses get out, but I can't turn any cattle, sheep, or goats or anything out there. They'll be out on the road. And you know what happens if you get out on the road. The county or the city is responsible if somebody has a wreck in the livestock. So I want my fence up. Okay. I don't know who to get his hold of the city. I don't even remember his name. So how long is this? How long is it going? At least eight, nine years. Okay, well, that's about time you came in. Well, I've mentioned it to, to Mark Peterson. I don't know how many times. He tried to get a hold of the city guy. Okay. We can yeah, we'll get Lori. You met Lori. I introduced you to Lori. We'll have her. We'll have her work on it um, and get you and get something back to you. Okay. You're going out of town though. You told me. I'm going out. We're leaving Friday. Okay. But we'll I'll try. Be back next Wednesday. We know. Oh, you'll be back next Tuesday. Keep yeah. me in Philadelphia, so. You'll be back some Tuesday. All right, thanks, man. Good to see you. All right, all right, all right. We'll we'll get an answer for you. Okay, uh, the rest of the folks who signed up, I wanted to speak about. I think primarily oil and gas. Uh, so Karen, um, I'm not sure how you say your last name. Speak. Speed. Speed. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. Thank you. I can't remember. Thank who you. is your secretarial person for records or? Oh, you, you can give it to Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, and Speed Karen. Yeah. Sometimes that's easier, but not usually to read. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Could you give us your name and begin your comments? My name is Karen Speed, 8310 Cherry Blossom Drive, Windsor, Larimer County. Please refer to the extraction oil and gas production sheet provided by the COGCC. The flared gas on the one and only Walt Well, just north of Windsor, operating since July 1, 2018 through May 2019, shows over 13 million cubic feet of uncaptured natural gas. I assume the mineral rights owners were not paid for that lost revenue. I was informed by legal counsel that based on CDPHE records, this flaring activity was occurring within the time frame without a permit. Often they may give, be given the, the first three months as an allowed period to flare. 
This appears to be at least eight more months of excessive flaring without the required permit from the Air Pollution Control Division. Extraction filed a request in August for a permit to flare, finally, with the CDPAG, as this issue was discovered and reported. The effects on the environment and health and health, human health could easily be impacted due to the toxic chemicals that can travel in those large plumes. Also, it needs to be noted that the mineral formations in Larimer are not well county. Production is much less with a very low comparative yield. Feel free to confirm this with Mayor Troxell, who publicly agreed with me on this at a PRPA meeting last Tuesday. As you're aware, based on the wind patterns with the, that the NSTAR project at UC Boulder shows, the winds often come in from the plains from east to west. Therefore, the poorest air quality will be found in the areas that are closest to the mountains. The article I have supplied explains that air pollution issue in depth. It clearly states that in this region of the Northern Front Range, quote, the oil and gas industry is the predominant source for VOCs, end of quote. I surely hope that Larimer County does not want even more of these toxic, highly carcinogenic chemicals in the air that we breathe. Another recent public concern with extraction is the COGCC ruling on August 1st against extraction regarding gross violation of COGCC rules 102B and 102F in your packet. 1002F demands implementation of best management practice regarding controlling stormwater runoff to prevent erosion, transport of sediment, and site degradation. This clearly can result in environmental impacts as was pointed out by the COGCC. COGCC Commissioner Mesner stated that extraction had shown a, quote, pattern of violations and a negligent approach to best management practices around storm water management. The COGCC fined extraction for this negligence $66,800. The vote from the commission was unanimous. Clearly, it is not just my opinion that this company and even possibly others exhibit what appears to be considerable disregard for some state rules which they, with which they portray to be so compliant. With the industry's track record of spills, leaks, explosions, fires, injuries to contract workers, death, many complaints by citizens and on noise, large truck traffic, strong odors, heavy dust plumes, light pollution, and now we have observed direct violations of the COGCC rules, I submit that this industry be seriously reg regulated or banned as extraction and other oil and gas companies proceed to invade Larimer County. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Next, Nancy Garcia. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. I would like to publicly request that you, while in the process of creating public policy for oil and gas drilling, become familiar with the findings of the 2019 sixth edition of the Compendium of Scientific medical and media findings demonstrating the risks and harms of fracking. Created by Physicians for Social Responsibility, this compendium provides summaries of peer-reviewed scientific journal articles specifically on fracking. Its purpose is to ensure careful consideration of all economic and health impacts. Here's the point. Other counties in oil and gas rich states have been where Larimer County is today. For 15 or more years, they have experienced and documented the consequences of fracking. I am urging all of us to have the foresight and the wisdom to consider these findings as we create policy for Larimer County. Some policymakers, along with oil and gas <coughs> excuse me, companies, are quick to cite the benefits of fracking and exaggerate the number of jobs that it produces. In one multi-state study, the industry claimed 31 jobs were created per well, but in reality, the number was four. A large percentage of jobs go to out-of-state workers, and more and more jobs are being replaced with automation. But there's really much more to the whole story. There are also significant social and environmental costs. With a large influx of job seekers in fracking communities, there are documented increases in crime rates, including assault, drug abuse, drunk driving, and crimes against women. Social costs also include the straining of police, emergency services, and municipal workers to handle the inevitable road damage, noise, air pollution, and odor complaints. And the loss of affordable housing may result in more homelessness here. Fear of hazardous materials used in and generated by fracking reduces property values 
which means fewer tax dollars for the county. Profits often flow to corporations and people living elsewhere, as well as out-of-state workers who leave for the next job, while residents get stuck with lasting environmental degradation, health concerns, and unsightly buildings and other structures. But in 2017, CSU researchers Loomis and Hefeli attempted to quantify the costs and benefits of fracking. They found that the long-term costs outweighed the benefits, and those long-term costs were health damage from air pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, wildlife habitat fragmentation, and the pollution of private drinking wells. I strongly urge you to take into account all of the consequences of allowing fracking in our county. Now is the time for us to assess the real uh, consequences. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Rick Casey. Hello. It's not working? All right. No. You don't have to be close to it. Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to address you today and enter my testimony into the public record regarding oil and gas regulation in Larimer County. I have lived at 1636 Larch Street in Fort Collins since August 2018, but previously lived in the Boulder, Denver area since 1981. I've taught a course on environmental economics at Front Range Community College since 2009. I'm speaking to you today as a member of the Larimer Alliance and the Fort Collins Sustainability Group, as well as a concerned citizen. I'm asking you to please place a moratorium on any new drilling of, for oil and gas in Larimer County until the COGCC has developed its new statewide rules. As you are aware, <clears throat> SB 181 has fundamentally changed the legal framework within which the oil and gas industry must operate in Colorado though we are still seeing how that will play out at the local level. But I'm here today to make a statement about the broader legal framework within which fracking was made legal in the first place, which it otherwise would not be, which makes it highly relevant to our discussion today. I'm also here to, to discuss the Halliburton loophole. I'd like to provide each of you with that short report <clears throat> about it. Effectively, this loophole is a short clause in the middle of the massive 2005 Energy Policy Act, which specifically exempted the hydraulic fracturing industry from the Safe, water, safe, safe Drinking Water Act, and by some nebulous legal extensions, which are still unclear to me, from the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and the Superfund Act as well. In other words, fracking was exempted from all major environmental laws by this one short clause. It was done as secretively as possible because it made an otherwise illegal activity, fracking, legal, and what's more, largely self-regulating since none of the state governments where it started to occur were prepared for how to address this new technology. This exemption got the nickname the Halliburton loophole because Halliburton perfected the technology for fracking in the late 1990s when Dick Cheney was a CEO. After Cheney became vice president in 2002, he met with attorneys from the oil and gas industry in the White House, which, under the circumstances, smacks of corruption from 2002 to 2005 and developed the carefully worded legal language to accomplish its goal, but remained unintelligible to the ordinary person. In other words, to hide its true motive. This legal loophole is one of the biggest abuses of the law to protect a specific industry that has occurred in U.S. history. The public needs to be made more aware of this, as this possibly illegal but certainly immoral action makes a mockery of all our environmental laws. There have been attempts to close the loophole since then such as the Fracturing Responsibility and Awareness of Chemicals Act or the FRAC Act in 2009 by Dan DeGette and Jared Polis. If we truly value the health and safety of our country and its citizens over the profits of the few, this loophole must be one day closed, and I hope that you, our county commissioners, will be in full support of such a law. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Sharon? Come on up. Introduce yourself, please, and give us your comments. Welcome. Good morning. I'm Sharon Bringleson. Lived in Fort Collins since 1999. Um, both Rick and Mrs. Garcia both presented a lot of good documentation. I've got a 
little spiel here, but I think I'm going to drop it and I just appeal to your heart and soul as human beings to listen to a framework uh, that both encompasses what I perceive in many others as a insane migration of livings over a cliff. And, and what I mean by that is I'm going to quote a molecular biologist, Martin Paul, who's been doing a lot of research on the molecular um, responses of the human body as well as other biological forms to not only um, chemicals that are in the environment, as such as those that are released by um, fracking, but also the EMFs that are being generated in the, not by Wi-Fi and other forms of uh, radiation in our environment. I didn't bring you any handouts. I felt like uh, there's a lot of information out there. I'd like to reframe the discussion to look at something which I call a confluence of factors that are creating uh, a momentum toward disease and maybe even extinction if some of the scientists that I've been listening to are correct. Um, Mr. Paul, you can, you can look at him and listen to um, a senator from Michigan who's a Republican who initiated legislation in the state of Michigan as well as Robert Kennedy and a bunch of uh, scientists on something called the 5G Summit. There's a lot of research that looks at not just oil and gas, but all kinds of chemical pollution and the effect on life forms. I have a formal complaint before the COGCC for my own personal situation in four areas, which is air, water, uh, livestock, and transportation, because I live on a gravel road and there's been um, impact on all of these levels on my own personal health as well as my animals, the quality of water coming out of the aquifer. So I, I served uh, as a health planner for the Greater Egypt Regional Planning Commission for about seven years and then I sat on a citizens review board for a certificate of need for the state of Illinois for the 730 county. So I understand the climate in which you function as commissioners and the pressure it puts on you to be accountable. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. But I just ask you to look at the big picture here. These are all tied together and it's impacting us as a confluence. Very good. Thanks, Thank Shirley. You. Thanks for your comments. Is there anyone else in attendance who would like to make public comment at this time? Come on up. Give us your name. Give us your comments. Hi. Hello. You're Elizabeth. Sonia. Sonia. Okay. Sorry about that. Give us your name, please, Sonia. Um, I'm Sonia Ketting, Fort Collins citizen, CSU alum. I've uh, known the town for uh, several decades. And I specifically wanted to bring up a point that you, Commissioner Donnelly, I've heard make um, once in Berthoud and uh, and then once in this room, um, believing that traffic is the number one contributor for um, air quality demise in this area. And there has been new science specifically to show that that is not the case, um, if it ever was. It is the case for Denver, but not northern Colorado. Um, I'm not going to give you copies of this article, but I, I probably will follow up with emailing it to you. It's by Rico Moore. And it was uh, published just on August 22nd. The headline is Oil Industry Exemptions May Doom EPA Efforts to Improve Front Range Air Quality. The last paragraph, he says, as for now, the Polis administration, by way of the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, continue to approve thousands of new oil and gas wells that will continue to pollute front range communities. At the current pace, these new oil and gas wells and production facilities are increasing air pollution and global warming in the state far faster than all the small incremental steps being proposed by the Polis administration to combat global warming and poor air quality to date. That's the Polis administration. So when you ask for some um, 
some nod to the people who have worked so hard on air quality previous to this administration, and Polis' administration can't even reverse this thing. It's a pretty serious situation. Um, Detlev Helmig is a respected scientist, atmospheric, from CU Boulder. He's maintained the most sophisticated continuous air quality monitoring system on the Front Range at the Boulder Reservoir in Erie, Colorado. This is far more sophisticated than anything we have in Larimer County at the time. He captures air quality samples, in some cases every 15 seconds, for over 20 oil and gas related VOCs. His lab analyzes the data and presents it to the public online. On December 22nd in 2017, Helmig recorded unusually elevated readings of ethane, propane, benzene, and other oil and gas related VOCs. On that date, a large explosion at a fracking site in Windsor had happened. Helmig's lab on the Boulder Reservoir in Erie is 40 miles from Windsor. Homes and communities along the path, but much closer to Windsor, were subject to much higher levels of exposure to those toxins than were registered at the reservoir. Helmig's lab registered those elevated levels many hours earlier, yet a reconstruction of wind patterns shows that is where they originated. If more continuous monitoring is utilized, it will not only provide more accurate information regarding emissions, it may also serve as an early warning system for large leaks that can result in explosions. SB 181 calls for such equipment to be used at large fracking sites. The rules for mandating those systems have not been written by the state yet. To truly protect our health and safety, we need this equipment. A postponement would be excellent, but we definitely need this equipment. Thank you, Sonia. Anyone else? Come on up. How are you? Give us your name. Give us your comments. I'm Marta Terman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Resident of Loveland. Good morning, How are you? Um, I'm good, running late this morning. So I'm here as a follow-up to uh, the letter that was presented to you a couple of weeks ago on August 20th. Um, we, uh, and at the time you stated that you'd get back to us, so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to re reiterate that specific, specifically that that letter um, um, uh, what came, didn't come from a small group of citizens, but from virtually thousands of citizens, um, not only the, the, the uh, group of us that signed on to the letter, but also all of the uh, citizens that are involved with the groups that, in, that endorse the letter. So I just want you to bear that in mind. Um, and I'll summarize the, two, the main two things that we asked of you. The first was um, to appoint uh, one of the physicians on the task force, that there's a vacancy on the task force because Arsene uh, Hikobian is uh, moving. And so um, we ask that you would uh, consider one of the physicians that had uh, applied for the task force. So I've actually, since that meeting, spoken to Dr. Adrienne Kraus. She was one of the applicants to confirm that she's still interested and that she's available. And yes, she's interested, she's available. She's been following what's been going on. So I really encourage you to um, ask of your staff to reach out to her and hopefully she can fill that vacancy. She's an OBGYN here in uh, Fort Collins. And our other ask was that you suspend all oil and gas mm. permitting, right? This right. is the discussion. Now, um, Commissioner Donnelly, you had told me a couple of times earlier this year that the reason you can't place a moratorium is because there's no existing land use regulations on oil and gas. So how can you place a moratorium on no regulations? So I've done a little bit more digging in the Larimer County uh, land use code. Okay. And I found this, and so I'm, this is, I'm curious about this. So under section 4.3.7, industrial uses. <laughs> Why is everybody quoting me today? Because <laughs> you're so fun to quote. Come on. Most um, quotable guy. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> so uh, oil and gas drilling production, section F. Any operation intended to discover, develop, recover, and or process oil and gas, excluding refineries, point one. An access permit must be obtained from the county engineering department prior to the commencement of any oil and gas drilling and production operations. So I'm curious, would it be possible for you to put a suspension on issuing those access permits so. during this, this, this time period until either the rulemaking is done or until the oil and gas land use regulations for the county are adopted? So I, I would ask We could you ask the attorney, but I assume yeah. we probably could do that. Find out. That would be yeah, most likely. That would could. be awesome. Great. So, in conclusion, right. and then um, just to follow up, if we could have some sort of at some point 
a formal response to our letter from you guys. Um, maybe a little bit better than a personal email from one of the commissioners to one of our members. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll so do it. Just, it's just as courtesy to the uh, understand. hundreds, thousands of citizens, et cetera. All Very right. good. So thank you so much. Good to see you. Thanks thank for coming you. in, Marta. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else? You came down. Want to talk? Okay, so no one else wishing to make public comment. We will close the public comment portion of our meeting. You're free to stay, obviously, if you want to hear our business meeting, or you can go. Um, we'll move on to approval of the minutes for the week of August 26, 2019. Commissioner Kafalas. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Move to approve the minutes for the week of August 26, 2019. Very good. We have a motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed 3 0. Brenda Jemison is back with us today. Uh, to present the schedule for the week of September 9 through 13, 2019. Hi, Brenda. Good morning, Commissioners. You look very rested. Thank you. I feel rested. <laughs> Good. Well, you needed it. Good. <laughs> On Monday, September 9th at 10 a.m., you have a work session regarding the performance measures for public records and information and internal services. At 1.30 p.m., Commissioner Donnelly will attend the Loveland Chamber Group Meeting at the Loveland Chamber of Commerce in Loveland. At 1.30 p.m., you have a community development work session with Lori Cadridge, the Interim Director of Community Planning, Infrastructure, and Resources. At 3 p.m. and again at 6.30 p.m., you have the land use items with the development review team here in the hearing room on the first floor. Do you know what we're doing at 6.30 that night? Do you know what we're doing that night? Yeah. Oh, it's canceled? That's, this is for the 9th. Not 9th, the September 9th. Well, it's fine. We can we can work it out. We may not have that meeting, though, Maybe. for anyone who's listening in intently, I'm sure. Very On good. Tuesday, September 10th at 9 a.m., you have administrative matters. That's this meeting here in this room. At 1.30 p.m., you have administrative direction to the county management here in the Sprague Lake Conference Room on the second floor. At 6 p.m., um, Commissioner Kafalis may attend the Environmental and Science Advisory Board meeting in the Carter Lake Conference Room on the first floor. On Wednesday, September 11th at 7.45 a.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Workforce Development Board meeting in the hearing room on the first floor. At 10.30 a.m., you have an abatement hearing for Elizabeth Glantz. At 12.30 p.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Ag Advisory Board meeting board. at 1525 Blue Spruce here in Fort Collins. On Thursday, September 12th at 7.30 a.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Fort Collins Downtown mm -hmm. Development Authority Board meeting at the Rocky Mountain Innisfere here in Fort Collins. At 9 a.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Spirit Crossing Clubhouse Open House at 1148 East Elizabeth Street in Fort Collins. At 11 a.m., Commissioner Donnelly will attend the groundbreaking for I-25 Segment 6, which is at State Highway 56 Interchange in Berthet. Oh. At 1130 a.m., Commissioner Johnson may attend the Larimer County Interagency Oversight Group Meeting in the Carter Lake Conference Room on the first floor. At 12 p.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Juvenile Community Review Board Executive Session at 255, 2555 Midpoint Drive in Fort Collins. At 1.30 p.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Office on Aging Advisory Council meeting on, at Midpoint Drive here in Fort Collins. At 4 p.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Homelessness Partnership Ex Exploration meeting at the Commons Conference Room, Fort Collins City Hall here in Fort Collins. At 6 p.m., you have the Joint Board of Health and Board of County Commissioners meeting at the Carter Lake Conference Room on the first floor. Oh, it's in this building? Yes. Okay. And then at 7 p.m., Commissioner Con Johnson may attend the Board of Health meeting, same room, Carter Lake Conference Room on the first floor. On Friday, September 13th at 12.30 p.m., Commissioner Donnelly may attend the I-25 Funding Committee meeting at the Candlelight Dinner Playhouse here in Johnstown. At 3 p.m., Commissioner Johnson will provide the closing remarks at the Veterans Administration, Administration Health Summit at the Colorado State University Lorry Student Center here in Fort Collins. At 6 p.m., Commissioner Kafalos may attend the Child Safe Celebrate the Night in Black and White event at the Hilton in Fort Collins. On Saturday, September 14th at 9 a.m., Commissioner Kafalos will host a community conversation at Mio My Coffee and Pie in LaPorte. Mm -hmm. That would be all for the week. Questions or comments for Brenda with regards to the sure. uh, the uh, yeah agenda, Commissioner? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Brenda. I just wanted to uh, clarify, you know, where it makes reference to me attending the Workforce Development Board meeting on on Wednesday, September 11th. When I can, I do attend those because they're they're valuable and interesting. Uh, but I believe Commissioner Johnson 
Aren't you the Commissioner Johnson is the it's on my calendar. Oh, it is on your mm -hmm. He's the liaison. So I he's think. the one who almost always goes, right? It's on, yeah, it's on my calendar. I just wanted to clarify that. So will you go as well or I may go. Okay. But it, but Commissioner Johnson is the liaison, Definitely I think. I just want to work for some yeah. advisory board. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually go. All right. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. Good to have you back, by the way. Thank you. Sin agenda today. <sighs> Three abatements. One agreement uh, between Larimer County and Barry Dunn McNeil and Parker LLC uh, for uh, a HIPAA project. Um, three deeds, six resolutions with regards to land use, um, four miscellaneous items, including an extension advisory committee uh, revised bylaws, Department of Human Service payments for July 2019, uh, midterm appointment to the uh, Larimer County Board of Appeals of Wayne Thompson, and a request, request for approval to enter upon lands uh, to do weed mitigation. Would either of my colleagues like to remove any of these items from the consent agenda for additional information? No, Mr. No, Chair. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of consent agenda for September 3rd, 2019. Very good. The motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion is passed 3 0. Comments from Commissioner's guests. I see Commissioner Kafalos has a guest. We're seeing this guy all the time. Commissioner, would you like to introduce your guest? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Mr. Thode. Uh, Zach Thode, you can introduce yourself, sir. Yep, yep. Just for clarification, I am not here today as a member of the Ag Advisory Board. I am okay. here as a citizen of and resident of you Livermore. Your plate. You're here so so yeah. often lately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get used to it. <laughs> so what's on your mind, Zach? Uh, so uh, there's a number of my neighbors here, and I'll um, I'll ask them to introduce themselves. You can stand and introduce yourselves one at a time. Go ahead, Danette. Cheryl. Go ahead. Or Cheryl. Go ahead. Why don't you, Cheryl? Cheryl Reynolds, Livermore. Good to see you again. Hi, everybody. Some more down here. Go ahead, Carl. Oh, okay. Forgot those. Carl Judson, Livermore. Oh, Carl. And John Higgins, Livermore. This is a troublemaker. That's the troublemaker section <laughs> down there. Okay. So what's going on in Livermore? So um, <laughs> we've discussed as a community just kind of the, the, the situation. I think we had last year we had the county shop come through, and we were in here harassing you guys a few times about that and trying to figure out ways to deal with that kind of as, as an afterthought. And... Um, Moving forward, I don't think we want to be in here harassing you as an afterthought. We want to be in here asking you guys to help us make better planning decisions into the future. Um, and Livermore's in a unique position as we speak today because you guys are going to be moving your county shop to the new facility, and there will be a vacant piece of property right in the middle of Livermore. And um, as that stands, it's zoned as open, and so we don't have much say in what could go on there. And we'd like to pursue kind of a long-term planning for Livermore and ask for you guys to charge some of your planning staff to help us with that and create a task force to help us um, look into the future 10 or 20 years and see what Livermore looks like. There's a, there's a number of other things that are coming into play that affect Livermore and that being Glade Reservoir for which you guys are negotiating your recreational obligations for and, and that's only four or five miles from Livermore and so, that, so there will be some direct impacts there and then Seaman Reservoir and potentially Halligan Reservoir are both um, very close to the Livermore area and we would all like to to kind of reach to you guys and say let's let's look at this as a big picture and how does how does, should Livermore look in 20 years or at least how should we steer it so that we're not running into into complaints with you guys more and more so um, so our request today is that you guys put together a task force we, uh, there's a number of neighbors as you can see that support this idea and that are interested in being on the task force I don't know if all these particularly are but there's <laughs> There's others that are also interested that aren't here today. So I'll leave it with you guys as far as that goes, that, that we move that direction. Very good. Commissioner. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, for your presentation, Zach, and thanks to the uh, neighbors for uh, uh, showing up. I haven't seen Mr. Judson in a long time. It's nice to see you again. Uh, I'm wondering, um, you're asking for uh, forming some kind of a task force. Do you see that this task force would operate within the current framework that we're putting in place about, uh, you know, updating the land use code and, and looking at various sub-area plans? Yes, I think it would work with that, that exact process, but probably more specifically, I'd rather it not be a broad county area effort, but also more of a sub-area effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Can, 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 you, can you tell us what's going on just west of the community center on the north side of County Road 74E? Can you update us on that? Uh, it looks like a mining exploration. I'm not sure. But that's your county property that you're building a county shop on, and they are moving lots and lots of dirt. Lots of dirt. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, so I, I suppose they're going to be done moving dirt one of these days and start building buildings. But um, the anticipation, Todd Bloomstrom's not here, but I think the anticipation from their schedule was to be complete by, by January 1st. Yeah, I drove by their Friday, I think. I saw that. I was kind of surprised at the scope of that. I know there was uh, some talk of building some berms or something to yep. kind of do some sound mitigation on, <coughs> on that, but it's much bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, they only brought you a piece of paper before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been out there. To, actually, we toured the site before. Yeah. We went out with them. The sites were being considered. Yeah. Uh, Tom and I did at yeah. least. I don't think yeah. Tom was here then. But no, he wasn't here yet. Yeah. We went with Al, uh, Al Johnson. Johnson. Johnson yes. Right? That's for yeah. his, his proposed site. He's yeah. on vacation today, so I kept him away from you guys. Damn. Not too bad <laughs> <laughs> for us. Okay, I think it's a great idea. Okay, well, well we d we should talk about it uh, during our um, one thirty planning meeting, which we have every Monday. We don't, but Michael's here and Leslie. Oh, Leslie's here, and so they can carry that on, and maybe uh, maybe you can have some conversations with you and yep. and see what's going on. And yeah, there's a number of communities that have expressed interest in sub area plans. We have pretty advanced ones for Laporte and yep. Red Feather, although they're older. Mm -hmm. And they probably are needing updating, but there's a couple, three or four other communities that have expressed interest in that in as it. well. So it's a very timely topic. It certainly never hurts to talk. No, no, right? we, we just don't want to be, we want to be ahead of the game Good. moving forward. So, well, great. Again, I appreciate your, your time this morning, and um, we all do. And uh, thank you guys all for coming this morning to help. Great recommendation. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Good to yep. see you. Yeah. Thank you. Follow us for the invite. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. Good to see you. you. Good to see you again. All right. Wow. Uh, county manager update. What are you up to? Well, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this time of year, it's all about the budget. So the budget director, Josh Fudge, and uh, the senior analyst, Matthew Behunen, and I have, be, have done more of our meetings with departments and offices regarding their budget proposal. We're getting good clarification on the issues that you know, we had questions about, and those are all have been very thoughtful proposals. So we're in the process of understanding the ins and outs of those proposals and bringing forward a recommendation for the commissioners. Um, the other big thing that's going on in the county is I was not able to attend it, but there was an open house last week uh, for the finance team who's working on replacing our central financial system. Uh, we've been using Oracle, and we're moving to uh, Central Square Technologies product. And this is a pretty big deal in that um, having swapping out your software that controls your whole financial system is very critical to our operations. And the team working on that is doing a great job of configuring the product to meet our needs. And uh, the go live is still a, a a long distance off and you're going to ask me when it is and I'm not going to be able to tell you but it's not uh, it's not eminent but we are in the process of configuring the system and teaching people how it works and asking them how it should be set up to meet their needs and I'm grateful for the work of the team and excited about the transition that will be coming in the next few months so that's my report very good Any questions for Linda is the new so how does the new software compare on cost from a cost perspective? Do you know? I believe that this was um, well, cost was one of the issues considered in the um, in selecting this product, and I know it was not the most expensive, but it wasn't the cheapest either. So someplace in the mid range, I believe. But I can get more information on that if you need it, Commissioner. No, that's good. Great. Anything else for Linda? Commissioner Activity Reports, what did you gentlemen do last week? Anyone want to talk? What did you do, Commissioner? Thursday, I went to the Fort Collins kickoff for the broadband connection uh, service that they're offering. <laughs> uh -huh. And Mayor Wade Troxell and a number of the staff spoke. The uh, whole, the big room there at uh, Lincoln Center was full of folks to celebrate that. A lot of interest in their product, $59 a month for wow. unlimited gigabyte 
whatever that means, service of broadband that's starting to be installed throughout Fort Collins. But it was a nice celebration, very important to the city of Fort Collins and uh, to businesses in Fort Collins being able to conduct uh, high-speed um, transactions and commerce over the Internet throughout throughout the city. It was a very good event. That's all I have. Very good. Commissioner, what are we up to? Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So on Tuesday evening, uh, both the county manager and I were up in Estes Park uh, mm -hmm. presenting to the town board about the, uh, the ballot proposal, the half-penny proposal. Uh, did the same thing on Wednesday morning with the North Fort Collins Business Association. On Thursday, I attended the um, uh, housing outreach and training uh, presentation from the Colorado Division of Housing, uh, Colorado Housing and Finance Authority, and Housing Colorado. And it was really uh, an excellent presentation. Uh, they talked about the current landscape and then with some of the, cha the legislation and some of the new funding opportunities, uh, that was very informative. Uh, one of the changes, for example, has to do with setting up a alternative dispute resolution mechanism within the Division of Housing to help folks, in particular homeowners who live in manufactured housing communities, mobile home parks, try to navigate some of the issues that come up. Uh, also, there was some really good information uh, that I think is relevant to our affordable housing strategic plan. Um, for example, there was this document, Affordable Guide for Local Officials. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very helpful. And then it's interesting what Boulder County has done. They've created this regional housing partnership, and I think there's some really good information in here as well. Uh, also that day, that evening, excuse me, Thursday, I attended the annual meeting of the ARC of Larimer County. Uh, Angela Myers, our clerk and recorder, was also there, and other, other folks. Uh, the, the, among other things, um, they have a new director. His name is Patrick and um, uh, he is from Alabama with his family, and he used to, he's an attorney. Uh, he, he used to work for Disability Law Colorado, and ex he, was a, he did a great job presenting about voting rights, and uh, it was good to have Angela Myers there, as he kept saying, to point out if he made any mistakes about um, you know, what's available to people with disabilities who wish to participate in the voting process. Finally, on Friday, I got a little bit lost because I didn't look at my calendar, which is no surprise. But I did finally get to the new food bank for Larimer County Distribution Center by the highway, by the Humane Society. And I met with the director, Ms. Pisani, Amy, and she walked me around and we looked at, I looked at some of the things. And it's quite an operation. And, and so I was glad to connect with her and we talked about some issues. Also, we met a teacher from, um, I think it was Rocky Mountain High School, and he had some students there who were interning, and these are students with uh, disabilities. And this has been going on for quite a while. They, they help in a variety of ways, and they learn job skills, uh, hard skills, as well as soft skills. So that was um, um, a good way to spend an hour, although I got there 35 minutes late, because I, who knows, I ended up somewhere. Thank you. Very good. Um, just a couple things I would mention. Uh, the first is the county manager and I met with a number of representatives from the Big Elk Meadows subdivision. Um, they were severely impacted following the flooding in 2013. I think, I think they have a series of dams there that provide their, their drinking water and things like that. And I think in, in the, the course of the flooding, uh, they lost maybe four of those dams. And so dam, I think dam number four is, uh, is just about, um, uh, repaired completely and we're about ready to be back in, in business um, there's been a, a need for a tremendous as property assessments um, for the individuals who live there as far as to in order to rebuild a lot of the infrastructure inside their community and um, so originally these folks came to us because there were a series of lots that were platted um, at the time that the one phase of the subdivision was actually created. And I don't know when that, you might know when that was. I don't even know. It was a long time ago. Long time ago. And um, since that time, uh, those lots were never sold. And since that time, I guess maybe they vac even vacated that portion of the plot. I don't know if they did, Leslie, you probably know. And, and so um, because they, they're paying so much in assessments, essentially what they're trying to do is see if there's a way for them, a means for them to recreate some of those lots um, to 
to so they can have a higher number of uh, of residents inside the community in order to, to kind of fund the operations of their of their community. They have their own fire department. They have their own water system. They have well, they even have like swimming pools and all all kinds of different amenities in the in the community. And so um, they talked about that. And I think Linda and I gave them some real practical advice, didn't we, Linda? Of course we did. Yeah, that's kind of our business. Um, the other thing. I don't know what an assessment is. When you said a property assessment, what does that mean? Well, they pay some kind of fee. It's so not a mill levy, but they pay a they pay like a I don't. What do you say? 20? So they're a homeowners association. Yes, so they assess a fee. the The homeowners association assesses a fee. It's not us. It's no, not it's us. Not, not our fee. No, no, it's their fee. No, it's their fee. But because these lots are in common owned area, if the lots were recreated, the homeowners association would own them and so they could generate some money by selling the lots for development um, and then Who owns them now? the homeowners it's a common association area. It's it's like an part of, they've been yeah. absorbed into common sell. area because they're not they vacated they've been absorbed the into they the common the plat area that created a, that portion of the plat and so and so those lots they don't exist for a new plat for they would have to do a new plat uh, there are, of course, are some There's constraints some real on the locations of those lots well, and the lot, sizes of the lots. In those, in those days, they made half-acre lots, and so you can't accommodate a, a septic field then. And, and so, yeah, exactly. You can't do that anymore in the county. You've got to have a two and a quarter acre, two and a half acre lot typically to accommodate a septic field. The and way so, the um, bylaws of their homeowners association are written, two thirds of the people who own property in the community now would have to agree on the proposal so and that's yeah. a pretty high hurdle in and of itself yeah well they'll have to talk to the health department that was one bit of advice we gave them and also they need to get um, pretty significant consensus among their neighbors in order to move anything forward and so um, that was kind of the advice we gave them but it was uh, interesting and they are trying to solve the problem I do feel for them and and we'll I know this board will will uh, always try to help them any way we can um, and then finally Linda uh, I wanted to bring your attention. This weekend, I'd made a trip up to Yellowstone National Park. I know it was nice, beautiful. It's very beautiful. It is beautiful. But I'll just tell you, they've got nothing on Rocky Mountain National Park, and it's not a surprise at all to me that Rocky Mountain. Yeah, they have they have a lot of geysers. Yeah, they have a lot. We have a lot of elk, and a lot of other cool stuff like marmots and and, and bears. Bison. They do a bison, and they actually have bears too. Uh, can't hold a candle to the majesty of Rocky Mountain National Park. So um, well done, uh, Rocky Mountain. You provide great service, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a reason why we have higher attendance at Rocky Mountain National Park than even at Yellowstone. It's because it's, a, it's truly the gem of the national park system. All right. The board has two items that we're going to consider um, in executive session. Uh, one is an executive session uh, to discuss modifications to the Estes Park Intergovernmental Agreement regarding administration of the land use code within the Estes Valley. Um, the second is an executive session to discuss Hildebrand versus Larimer County Sheriff's Office. Um, do we have any idea about the, the time requirements for either of those items? Frank, how long for the Estes Park deal? Why does it matter? 20 minutes, and how long for Hildebrand versus Larimer County Sheriff? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay, and there's no decision expected in either item. So once the board exits our open session, we will not reconvene in open session. We will recess directly from our executive session. Um, is it okay to just do one motion and enter for both those items at the same time? Yes. We typically have done that. I just want to, okay. Commissioner Johnson, I think it's your turn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the Board of County Commissioners go into executive session for discussion of the modifications to Estes Park and governmental agreement regarding inter administration of land use code within the Estes Valley and for discussion of Hildebrand versus Larimer County Sheriff's Office. Both of these are pursuant to CRS 24-6-402, paren 4, paren B, conferences with an attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific legal questions. All right, we have a motion. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed 3-0. The board is now in executive session.